The Padawan of Nagani Zhou and Kaosan Darach, Satil Shen was one of the first Jedi to engage a Sith Lord in over 300 years, surviving the battle that claimed Darach's life at the start of the Great Galactic War in 3681 BBY. Resuming her training under the Togrutan master Darnala, Shen rose to prominence during the conflict as a Republic war hero, leading the successful recapture of Alderaan from Sith Imperial forces. Shan was involved in peace talks with the Sith Empire in 3653 BBY, but was forced to watch helplessly as the Sith covertly invaded Coruscant, ransoming the world in exchange for a favorable position in negotiations. However, while Darnala succumbed to her hatred of the Sith and attempted to undermine the treaty, Shan remained committed to the peace process. In the post-war years, Shan attained knighthood and rose to prominence within the Jedi Order, eventually becoming Grand Master, but she also lived to see renewed hostilities with the Sith Empire. Born a mere century after the Battle of Rusin, Yoda lived and trained as a Jedi during the Republic Golden Age, an era of peace. Distinguishing himself as a knight and eventually becoming Grand Master of the Order, Yoda ultimately had the misfortune of presiding over the Twilight of the Jedi. The Sith, long thought extinct, had gone into hiding, quietly infiltrating and undermining the Republic political system, their machinations coming to a head with the start of the Clone Wars. With the Jedi forced into a military role that they hadn't occupied in centuries, Yoda was forced to watch helplessly as the Order was gradually whittled away by wartime attrition before being almost completely destroyed by Sith treachery. Yoda attempted to strike back by attacking the Dark Lord of the Sith, revealed to be the Republic Chancellor Palpatine, waging a titanic lightsaber duel in the Senate Hall, but he was ultimately defeated and forced to flee. Going into hiding on the swamp world of Dagobah, Yoda trained Luke Skywalker in the Jedi ways before dying of old age. Yoda transcended the material plane as a Force spirit, while Skywalker went on to overthrow the Sith and reform the Jedi Order. Okay, before we jump into this, I just have an opinion to voice. I do not like the current design of Satil Shan. It just seems to me that the writers and creators of the various forms of Star Wars media don't have faith in their ability to make a female character stand out on the basis of her character and personality, so they have to sex her up, put her in a skimpy form-fitting outfit, and give her an unorthodox lightsaber style to distinguish her. When it was just Bastila Shan, that was fine but almost every heavily featured female Jedi has fallen into this mold, and I can't help but find it a little disappointing. I much preferred Satil Shan's original appearance, the Nomi Sunrider style look, which struck me as being much more appropriate for a Jedi character, feminine without being sexualized. But that's just my opinion, so let's move on with the video. I will be starting things off with an overview of their typical tactics and responses, as their attributes in this regard very much determine what sort of contest this will be. Against conventional soldiers and battle droids, the tactics they have employed have been very clever and well thought out, the best example being how Yoda darts around the battlefield picking off enemies while promoting confusion and disarray. He has single-handedly destroyed entire armies by essentially tricking them into self-destructing, using their numbers and resources against them. However, their conduct while in single combat with opposing force wielders is not nearly so virtuoso. Their go-to response has almost always been a frontal assault with their lightsabers, attempting to outright overwhelm the opponent's defenses, and only using their force abilities to facilitate their continued reliance on this tactic of direct confrontation. 
While some of the tricks they've used to support their martial offensives have been quite inventive, the standout being when Shan collapsed a tree on Darth Malgus, forcing him to break off and giving herself a moment to regain her composure before re-engaging, their conduct is, on the whole, almost painfully straightforward. As to why their approaches are so similar, despite the drastically different circumstances that they lived and worked under, I think it comes down to Shan being forced to adopt this approach due to the necessities of the battlefield. She can't take the time to outfence every Sith individually, lest she leave herself vulnerable to other dangers. So she needs to be able to rapidly overwhelm one guy and immediately move on to the next. Whereas Yoda's approach is dictated by his personal distaste for combat. He focuses on rapidly overwhelming targets because of his desire to resolve conflict and impose peace as quickly as possible. He just wants to get it over with. As a result, neither is going to achieve victory by outwitting or outmaneuvering the other. They will go head to head, and this fight will play out like a head-on collision between two freight trains. Appropriately, Satil Shan and Yoda were both among the most powerful force wielders of their respective eras, and again, despite living and operating under drastically different circumstances, they ultimately developed their powers in a very similar fashion. Both relied extremely heavily on force-based physical augmentation, allowing them both to perform incredible feats of speed, strength, and agility force-assisted acrobatics especially being the linchpins of their respective fighting styles. Yoda's negligible physical condition made him especially reliant on this skill to operate. They both demonstrated some very clever tactical and defensive applications of telekinesis, but on the whole, both focused on brute force strikes, overwhelming the opposition with sheer destructive power. In keeping with their reputations as Masters of the Force, both included a number of obscure and unorthodox powers in their arsenals, the most notable and most applicable being Tutaminus. Yoda has employed this power to deflect blaster bolts and absorb and redirect bursts of Force lightning, and Shan, more impressively, has used it to catch a lightsaber blade. While Yoda is credited with more feats as an academic force wielder, Satil Shan matches him to a T in terms of combative ability, so there is no clear advantage here. And, as previously mentioned, and ironically for such dedicated Jedi Consulars, their primary mode of attack was with lightsaber combat. Satil Shan and Yoda both employed extremely acrobatic and highly aggressive fighting styles, Yoda being a confirmed Ataru master, and Shan's specialization in the style being strongly suggested. The fourth lightsaber form, Ataru was a dynamic and aggressive martial art that emphasized the use of acrobatics and elaborate swordplay and incorporated unarmed combat techniques and dual blade fencing into its training. The defining aspect of Yoda's technique, and the main reason why I consider him overrated as a lightsaber duelist, is his sole reliance on the basic core elements of Ataru, the Su Ma rotations, his style being nothing more than a textbook perfect application of Form 4, devoid of any personalized elements or refinements. What I see as the element that sets the great duelists apart from the Joe Schmo fighters is that the great masters elevate the practice and turn combat into a form of personal expression, with their fighting styles essentially becoming the physical representations of their beliefs and mentalities, and this is something that I simply don't believe Yoda has attained. In the novel The Old Republic Fatal Alliance, it is made quite clear within the text that this is something that Shen has accomplished. The Grand Master had impressed with more than her telekinetic and telepathic skills. Her speed and decisiveness in combat were unbelievable, but she never once made a sound. 
Her face was calm, almost serene, as she slashed and hacked her way through the hexes. There was a tranquility about her, almost a blissfulness, that spoke of an intimacy with violence that Axe had not expected. To the Sith, violence was an art form. To Master Satil, it seemed like life itself. Satil Shan refined and developed her technique over time, and there is a clear difference in how she fought between the battles of Korriban and Alderaan. She was a utilitarian who designed her style to suit her needs, trimming the fat and evolving over time, whereas textbook perfect Yoda remained quite static. I'm not arguing that Shan is a perfect lightsaber duelist, as she does have quite a few problems. She is a purely offensive fighter who experiences clear difficulty when forced into a defensive role, essentially a reverse Darth Zana, and there is no indication that she ever addressed this major flaw in her technique. But I ultimately believe that Shan's practical focus serves her better than Yoda's academic one, and in my books at least, she is the superior martial artist. Satil Shan was a 59-year-old human female. While her original character design showed her age, her in-game appearance in The Old Republic MMO is largely identical to her appearances in the cinematic trailers, making it clear that she is in amazing physical shape for someone of her years, having likely used the sustaining power of the light side of the Force to marginalize the effects of old age. The same cannot be said for Yoda. A member of an unknown species, Yoda was 900 years old at the time of his death, and he showed his age. Racked with arthritis, and typically demonstrating labored breathing and noticeable difficulty walking, requiring a cane to maintain basic mobility. Yoda's combat effectiveness was entirely due to his applications of force-based physical augmentation. While Shan doubtlessly had a similar reliance, it's not nearly to the same degree, and she is obviously in better physical condition than the competition. To briefly compare their equipment, Shen wears a lightly armored, form-fitting combat jumpsuit and carries a blue-hued double-bladed lightsaber, whereas Yoda wore a simplified set of Jedi robes and carried a green-hued short lightsaber. The extra blade on the saber staff limits the wielder's range of movement, but it also provides more surface area for striking and parrying and it is my assertion that such a weapon makes for a superior defensive tool, specifically against Yoda's application of Ataru, holding the weapon vertically and moving it side to side as needed, and you've effectively blocked off most of Yoda's preferred vectors of attack. Conversely, the only benefit provided by Yoda's Shoto lightsaber was simply making the weapon usable for someone of his stature, he didn't reap any of the defensive benefits traditionally associated with such a weapon. Clearly, Satil Shen is the better equipped fighter. The ultimate irony is how this equipment works against her. Just to recap, despite their academic and philosophical insights and achievements, both are painfully straightforward offensive combatants. They run dead even as combative force wielders, Shan is arguably the superior martial artist, and is easily in better physical condition and is better equipped. However, this is one of those matchups where one combatant gets all of the edges in the individual categories, but comes up short when the entire package is added up. In this instance, Satil Shan is brought to heel by logistics. Shan's lightsaber technique already has a major level of labor intensity to it, and that's against large, stationary targets like Darth Malgus. Yoda, by my estimation, may not match Shan's skill, but his comparable strength in the Force allows him to match her performance. Shan's dynamic fighting style and the cumbersome weapons she wields do not go together well. 
in my view, this was her biggest liability in both of her engagements with Malgus, and would be even more so against someone like Yoda. While I believe that the Saber Staff would make for an effective defensive weapon against Yoda's style, it would be seriously lacking as an offensive weapon. The exaggerated moveset required to maneuver the weapon leaves the wielder exposed to counterattack, and the lack of precision that results from such broad moves means that Shen would have a very difficult time striking a small, fast-moving target like Yoda. Her one-trick pony offensive style, however refined it is, would leave her defenses hampered, and she would have to work twice as hard to keep up the pressure because she's handling a lightsaber almost bigger than she is. Yoda would have a fairly easy time evading her wild lightsaber strikes and working his way inside her guard, and Shan would be cut down in short order. I declare Yoda the victor.